Hey, Craig Gordon here with Utah Avi on Monday the 21st, and I'm at about 10,000 feet in elevation. I came up to take a look at this avalanche here. Super unusual because, I mean, just look at how thin everything looks, right? Be the kind of terrain that we might want to ride and try to avoid the avalanche hazard. The problem is... It's these weaknesses that are connected to a slab just like this that are the big problem. And this avalanche was triggered by a snowcat that was working in that area there. So that's a northwest facing slope. What's even crazier is how connected this slab is because I am standing on an east facing slope across this drainage and right there where my ski pole is you can see that shooting crack. So I am a couple football fields away from something that was triggered across Canyon here. This speaks to me about the connectivity of this slab and the continuity of a weak layer that was put in place in November and December. It's a problem that isn't going to go away anytime soon. So that's why we're still seeing remotely triggered avalanches, avalanches triggered from a distance and from adjacent slopes. Super, super sketchy snowpack out here in the western Uintas. The way we manage it is by managing our slope angle. Staying off of and out from under steep slopes, we could still have a blast in any of this low angle pow right in here. Just want to make sure that you don't have any steep terrain up above or adjacent to where you're riding. UtahAvalancheCenter.org, of course. Click on that for your one-stop shop for all things Avalanche.